Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. A brand new 7 star terror raid event has been announced for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We're going to go over all of the details for what we can expect from this raid as well as some builds we can do in preparation for beating this when it goes live later this week. <laughs> So running from the 2nd until the 4th of February for its first phase in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, we're going to see a brand new 7-star Terror Raid event for Empoleon. It will, of course, be returning for its second phase the week after from the 9th until the 11th of February. So we'll get two opportunities to take this on in our games. If we take a quick overview of the options that Empoleon has, it's going to be at its base typing a water and a steel type Pokemon. Of course, this will have the mightiest mark. It will only be catchable once per save file, as per usual with these seven star raids. It will likely have its competitive ability, which is its hidden ability, meaning any drops that it takes to its stats throughout the battle using things like Screech, acid spray or metal sound it will activate this ability giving it a plus two stat boost in its special attack making it a very dangerous pokemon so our normal lines have been able to weaken those defense stats throughout the raid to just expedite our damage isn't something that we'd be able to rely on as we'd normally do now with that 30 times multiplier to its hp stat you're looking at around 9270 hp that we're going to have to do in damage to take this down of course we have mentioned it will be an ice terror type so it will have a boost to any ice type attacks it will have access to expected attacks that it could have going to be a mix of water type attacks flying steel of course as well as ice but it does get some decent coverage with some dark type coverage in there as well things to really just keep in mind when going into this battle or when you're building a pokemon you expect to do well against it the one thing i would say about empoleon as well is it does get a good mix of special and physical type attacks so i would imagine this could be a mixed attacker so not out of the realms of possibility and something that might catch a lot of us off when this goes live hydro pump is its strongest special attacking water type attack it probably will have access to this but if it does go down a physical route liquidation is a very strong option aside from that flash cannon is something that i could see from a special point of view it having access to that gives it a steel type option and then you've got to take note of the flying type coverage that it does have obviously being an ice type Fighting type Pokemon are going to be those at the front of the queue that you're going to bring to do super effective damage. And those flying type coverage moves that it does have access to can be quite detrimental to a lot of strategies that we might be trying to implement. Air Slash is one of those that plays off the special attacking stat that can play off that competitive boost that may be happening throughout the raid. And then you've got Drill Peck as well that it can use from a physical standpoint. So if you are planning on bringing a fighting type into this raid, you've got to be aware of these as potential threats to you. And of course, being an Ice Terror type Pokemon is going to have access to some Ice type attacks. Gets access to Icy Wind that will lower our speed on our side of the field. So we can maybe take advantage of that. But it does have some stronger options as well. It's special attacking side options, Blizzard and Ice Beam. We do see the snowscape on here to bring the hail to the field it will probably rely on blizzard give it 100 percent accuracy throughout the raid as well when that snowscape is in effect got ice beam as well it's not as reliant on the snowscape being active but still a very strong attack you need to be aware of from the special end of the spectrum you've got ice spinner which is an alternative physical attacking ice move and that can be detrimental if you are having terrain on the field or anything like that because it will remove the terrain along with that attack and then knockoff is a dark type coverage move that we could potentially see which would remove our item and make things a little bit trickier for some of the builds that we're going to suggest in this raid now some of the setup options it does have access to are support moves it's got snowscape that makes a lot of sense being an ice type in this raid it will once it summons the hail to the field get a defense boost as well making it even more difficult to take down and again will boost the accuracy of something like blizzard feather dance is another option that it does have that will lower the attacking stat on our side of the field by two stages every time it uses it so again combining quite nicely with that snowscape if we see it there metal sound is another option it does have access to lowering our special defense so playing on that competitive ability which if proc does boost its special attacking stat make those special attacking options hit a lot harder and then one of its only ways to boost its own stats is actually sword stance and this what makes me think that it could be maybe a mixed attacker going into this where it plays off things like blizzard with the snowscape for a special attacking option and then has that liquidation potentially to play off that physical attack as well because it's 
Special and physical attacking stats are pretty good overall. So a mixed set would make a lot of sense and it would make it a lot more threatening to go up against because it's harder to prepare for a mixed attacker than it is just one of the two sides, special or physical. And of course, it is worth noting, it might be worth waiting until the raid goes live before you build anything in game, save those resources. But if you do want to build some things in game in preparation for it, these are some ideas and they might even inspire some more of your own. But the first one that I really had come to mind was Bronzong. It's going to resist those ice type attacks. We have a way to mitigate the water type attacks as well. And then the steel type attacks aren't going to be anything that we really have to be concerned about because they're not going to be hitting us for effective damage. So we do resist those. Now this Bronzong is level 100. It is hyper trained. Make sure you do bottle cap all of those IVs. The terror typing on this Bronzong is steel. And we do have the Shell Bell as the held item. So we have a line of recovery throughout the raid. So we're not relying on those heal cheers. The moveset that we're going to go for with the Bronzong is Skill Swap, Calm Mind, Metal Sound and Flash Cannon. And the EV investment is going to be 252 EVs in HP and then 252 EVs in Special Attack with the rest put into that Special Defense stat. As always, the builds that we feature in today's video will be down in the description below if you want to take a closer look at all of the details from them after the video. Now, the basic idea with this Bronzong is that we're going to try and turn one go for a skill swap. The only caveat which might not make this work is if we see the shield go up turn zero or turn one from the Empoleon and that will prevent us from actually skill swapping away the competitive ability on the Empoleon. So like I say, this is why it's probably worth waiting until the raid goes live till we know a bit more information about when the shield goes up, when it nullifies stats on our side of the field, its side of the field, etc. But if we don't see that shield go up early on, I think the bronze zone could be a very good option because as soon as we get that competitive ability from the Empoleon, it means if it's going to be trying to drop any of our stats, it's actually giving us a special attack boost every time that happens. And on top of that, we would then be able to use the metal sound option where we can lower the Empoleon special defense stat by two stages every time we use it, potentially setting ourselves up to do some big damage very quickly with the Bronzong and it's good defensively as well. So it's going to be able to take a flurry of attacks from the Empoleon. We do have the Calm Mind, so that's going to help us boost our special attack and special defense by one stage every time we use it. And then combining that with the Metal Sound where we are lowering that special defense, the Flash Cannon is going to be hitting very, very hard, especially after we are able to Terrasalize. So definitely one to keep in mind, I think, going into this weekend and one that I do think could do a decent job against Empoleon when it goes live. Next up is something that we all probably have built in our games already, but it is going to be Annihilate. I do feel like Annihilate could potentially be a very good option going into this raid for the fact that Empoleon has a lot of options that are going to be able to lower our stats. And because of that, we can really play off that with the Define ability. If it drops our speed with something like the Icy Wind, and it's going to activate our Define ability and give us an attack boost for our trouble. We went for the Expert Belt item here on the Annihilate Fighting Terror type, of course, level 100 and hyper trained with the moveset of Sunny Day, Bulk Up, Rage Fist and Drain Punch. Defiant is the ability that is very important, I think, for this Empoleon. And then the EV investment is going to be 252 in HP, 252 in Special Defense and then the remaining four in attack. So your stats should look like this. But the basic premise of this is going to be getting that sunny day up, overriding a snowscape or even a rain dance that we could potentially see from the Empoleon. That's going to get rid of that defense boost that the snowscape gives ice type Pokemon. We've got bulk up if we want to try and start setting up ourselves where we can boost our attack and our defense stat. And then we've got the Drain Punch, which is going to primarily be our main attacking option, especially after we Terrasalize, which then gives us a line of recovery throughout the raid as well. So like I say, if the Empoleon does decide to go down a route where it is trying to lower our stats, the Metal Sound, the Feather Dance, the Icy Wind, it will all the time it's doing that proc that Define ability, which could put us in a nice position to really start kind of a momentum swing that we need in the raid to be able to do the damage and take it down pretty easily. So definitely one to consider going in and in particular because it's accessible to everyone. 
regardless of what version you've got and you've probably already got an annihilate built in your game next up is reggie steel a little bit like the bronzong i think could be very good going in against the empoleon this weekend not a pokemon that everyone's going to have access to but if you do you can transfer it into Pokemon Scarlet and Violet through Pokemon Home. Registeel going to have the Fighting Terra type on it. It's going to be level 100, hyper trained, and the Shell Bell held item. Now, the moveset that we're going for with the Registeel is going to be Sunny Day. Again, a bit like the Annihilate. We don't need to go over that again. It's going to remove the Snowscape, the Rain Dance, potentially, if we do see that as an option. And then I'm going to have Amnesia that's going to boost our special defense by two stages every time you use it, making us able to take those special attacks, those Hydro Pumps, those Blizzards, anything that comes out that could threaten us a lot easier. Then Iron Defense as well, that's going to make, if it is a mixed attacker, us able to really take those physical attacks way, way better. It's going to boost our defense stat by two stages every time you use it. And then it also plays into the body press, which actually hits off the defensive stat of the Pokemon rather than its attacking stat. So when you've used three iron defenses, you're essentially maxing out your defense stat. Your body press is going to be hitting as hard as possible. And into an ice type Pokemon, you're really going to be able to do a lot of damage. And the nice thing about Reggie Steel as well, it does have the clear body ability. So if the Empoleon is trying to lower our stats in any sort of way, that will be prevented from the clear body ability. Now, the EV spread we've got on this Reggie Steel, I thought would be good going into this one, is going to be 252 in defense and 252 in special defense with the rest put into HP and an impish nature. So boosting that defense stat and lowering the special attacking stat, which we aren't going to be using in this raid. So I do think a decent option going into this raid, Reggie Steel probably going to be able to do a good job but I realize not everyone's going to have access to Registeel, unfortunately not available to catch in Scarlet and Violet, but able to be traded in from Pokemon Home. The next up is Hariyama. I really like this option going into this raid. Could be potentially very good. Of course, we'll need to be careful if we do see things like Air Slash or Drill Peck from the Empoleon. It is going to threaten it because of its fighting typing. Level 100, hyper trained has got the fighting terror type and the held item is going to be a flame orb that's going to play off its ability the move set is going to be sunny day belly drum bulk up and drain punch the idea is to basically get that sunny day up turn one we've been through what sunny day does it's going to disrupt the snowscape take away a potential defense boost to the ice type pokemon and if we're in a space where we are able to get a belly drum off then that is definitely something that i would recommend doing might not be possible though, but as a backup to that, we're going with bulk up this time around. That's going to boost our attack and our defense by one stage. Fortunately, Hariyama doesn't get access to Sword Stance like its counterpart, Iron Hands. So bulk up a decent option nonetheless. And then our main attacking option is going to be Drain Punch. The ability is going to be Guts. And like I say, it does play off that Flame Orb item where it allows us to get an attack boost. It burns us as well, so we are affected by that status condition. And the nice thing about it as well, because we're probably going to see a lot of ice type attacks that can potentially freeze us, put a stop to our run in the raid. We avoid that by having that burn status, and it also benefits us in our attacking abilities as well. The EV spread for this Hariyama is going to be 252 in HP, and then 252 in its special defense and an adamant nature with the remaining four evs in that stat you could potentially go with the thick fat ability on this hariyama because obviously that cuts the amount of damage done by ice type attacks by 50 percent but then i would change the item to something like maybe an expert belt or a shell bell or even something like the metronome item that can just swing momentum by boosting the attack damage every time that you're using the same consecutive move. Of course, we've got another fighting type to mention going into this raid, and that is going to be Iron Hands. Not the best on the special defensive side of things, but we can mitigate that slightly with the way we train it with its EVs. Level 100, hyper trained, of course. We are giving it the clear amulet item here and also the fighting terror type. It's worth noting that the clear amulet, if we do see the Empoleon try to use any of those moves like Feather Dance, like Metal Sound or Icy Wind, they're not going to affect us at all in this raid because the clear amulet will protect us from any stat drops. The move set is going to be Belly Drum, Sword Stance, Close Combat and Drain Punch. Ability is Quark Drive, of course, and the EV spread is going to be 252 in HP and 252 in Special Defense with an adamant nature basic premise with the iron hands is, is going to be basically boosting our attack stat up in some means if we're able to get a belly drum off because we're able to take those hits a little bit better early on in the raid then that's going to be great we're going to be able to expedite our damage quite quickly 
if you are taking too much damage at the start of the raid, then the Sword Stance is a better, more reliable option, but you're not taking 50% of your HP for the trouble of maxing out your attack stat. Then Drain Punch is going to be your main attacking option here. It's going to provide you with a line of recovery throughout the raid, probably worth PP maxing the Drain Punch on the Iron Hands, but definitely a decent option. And again, a little bit like the Annihilib, where you're already probably going to have an Iron Hands built in your game, and it's going to do a decent job against the Empoleon. The only thing that is a bit of a disadvantage with the Iron Hands over the other two fighting options that we've already mentioned, the fact that it doesn't get sunny days. So if we do see the Snowscape from the Empoleon, it isn't going to be able to remove that defense stat boost that it gets straight away. You're going to have to wait those five turns until the Snowscape dissipates from the field. And finally, a Pokemon that we're going to mention to wrap up today is going to be Gallade. I do think it could potentially be an okay option, a bit like the Bronzong has access to that skill swap. So we'll get into that in a moment. Level 100 Hyper Train, fighting a Terra type on it, and the Shell Bell as its held item. The move set for the Gallade is going to be skill swap, Sunny Day, Calm Mind, and Aurora Sphere. The ability here doesn't really matter too much. Steadfast is fine because we're going to be ideally swapping our abilities with the Empoleon at the start of the road if that is possible, of course. Falls into the same problem that Bronzong could have if we see the shield got up on that turn zero where we're unable to get the skill swap initially, which is exactly what we're going to want to try and do with this set. Get the skill swap up as soon as possible give the Gallade the competitive ability and the Steadfast to the Empoleon and then get the Sunny Day up, override any Snowscape or any weather that's on the field and then start Calm Minding to then take advantage of the Aurora Sphere that's going to play off that special attacking stat on the Gallade. Now the EV spread of this Gallade is going to be 252 in special attack and 252 in its special defense with a modest nature. The only thing that I would say about Gallade is it has a sky high special defense stat, so it is going to be able to take a lot of those special attacking moves from the Empoleon. Again, like the other fighting types that we've covered today, has to be very careful about those flying type attacks that could potentially be there on the Empoleon. But otherwise, Gallade going to be a very good option, I think, going into this, especially with the Calm Mind, if you can get a few of those set up, it's going to bolster your defenses. You're going to be able to fire those Aurora Spheres off and do some good damage. And especially if you've got the competitive boost, if we are able to skill swap that, then the Empoleon trying to lower our stats in particular with like something like Icy Wind. And it's going to give us that competitive boost to our special attack and mean that we can potentially get some good damage off onto it very early on in the raid and start making it a bit easier. But if I was to say what Pokemon I'd probably be more confident than anything going into the raid, it would be the Registeel and then the Bronzong, probably followed by the Annihilate. But the Bronzong, I feel, is very solid going into this one. It's good defensively. It's got the tools to be able to shut down that competitive ability on the Empoleon, exploit it on our side of the field and take advantage of being able to then lower its special defense stats, boost ours with the Calm Mind, and then hit it for very hard, super effective damage with that Flash Cannon. So they are some builds that I would recommend looking at. Hopefully, either you build them in your game or you hold off, or they just inspire some ideas for you to take into this Empoleon this weekend. I do feel like this one might be a bit tricky because there is the possibility of it being a mixed attacker, like we've already mentioned in this video. And that competitive ability does definitely scare me with some of the support options that it has access to. Let me know down in the comment section below what you are thinking about bringing when this raid goes live later this week. Of course, we'll be going live when the raid goes up and we'll be doing the best solar builds for this here on the channel. So if you are around later this week, it'd be great to have you join us while we figure out what the best solar strategies are to take the seven star Empoleon down. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. I hope you found today's video useful as always. If you have, do consider dropping a like on the video it does really help and definitely hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all of our pokemon scholar and violet content when it comes out on the channel thank you so much for tuning in take care of yourselves more importantly than anything now i'll see you all in another video very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye